This takes us to our fourth and final clade of protists, the Unicanta. Uh, Unicanta means one flagellum. Doesn't have two, doesn't have four, doesn't have eight, doesn't have hundreds or thousands, but just one uh, in the flagellated forms. We've got three phyla of protists to consider, and then two uh, kingdoms that are also part of this clade Unicanta, including our own, the Animalia uh, and Fungi. We are all in this one flagellated uh, clade. And this particular uh, single flagellated cell is an animal cell. It's a sperm cell. First uh, phylum to consider is called Myxogastrida, sometimes called Myxomycota which implies uh, that it is fungus-like, and that is true. Uh, mixogastrids are typically found, uh, when, when they're not reproductive, as a plasmodium, a lowercase p, unitalicized plasmodium, which is a term to describe, well, you can see what it is. It's a multinucleate mass of protoplasm. So basically, it's like a one big cell with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of nuclei that can interact with each other. Um, so that's why we might call it a supercell. Uh, they are heterotrophic. They go through alternation of generations uh, called sporic meiosis. And they have a resistance structure. Many of them have a resistance structure called a sclerotium. Uh, sclero means hardened. Uh, and sclerotia are like little hardened pellets of uh, the protoplasm which can resist desiccation, drying out, uh, or a lack of resources, food, water, uh, until conditions improve, then they can emerge and form a new uh, plasmodium. Uh, and the one you saw in lab was Physarum polycephalum, which is this yellow slime mold, which is kind of sulfury looking. If you come upon this in the forest, you should know that it is alive. Another common mixogastrid that we see in our forests around here is this one here. Uh, this is the, the spore forming stage. This is called Steminitis capillaris. Uh, and if you're out in the woods, you might see these. They're, they're very small. And they kind of look like uh, stacks of, of sparklers to me. But these uh, structures are producing the spores that will distribute new, the, new, the next generation of this particular mixogastrid. Uh, but they can come in a number of other kind of beautiful colors, like this lovely orange here. Uh, they can be kind of net-like in appearance. Like This thing looks like a, a pretzel gone crazy. It's called Serpula. Another uh, unicont phylum is the gymnamoeba, which means the naked amoebas. Uh, gymnamoebas in this particular phylum move by a special type of pseudopodia, not flagella, not cilia, but pseudopodia that are called lobopodia. They're called lobopodia because they look kind of like lobes, like ear lobes or the lobes of an oak leaf. Uh, mostly aquatic in marine and freshwater environments. Uh, some are planktonic, most are benthic. Uh, two representative free-living genera of amoebas are the genus amoeba itself, and there's another genus of amoebas which has the name chaos. And I'm not sure what the story is there, uh, but there it is. We used to talk about a separate uh, parasitic phylum called the entamoeba, but now we know that this uh, parasitic lineage is part of gymnamoeba. Uh, two very important members of gymnamoeba that are parasitic, entamoeba histolytica, which causes amoebic dysentery, and entamoeba gingivalis, which is associated with gum disease. And folks around here, uh, you may encounter in the summertime uh, what's called a brain-eating amoeba. And uh, that is actually not in this particular phylum. It's in the excavata, in that first clade that we talked about, and its scientific name is Neglaria fowleri. Um, so if uh, you, you've heard of this, 
you heard you probably shouldn't go swimming in, in lakes in the summertime when the, the water's been warm for a while because you might get infected with the brain-eating uh, amoeba, or some people erroneously call it the brain-eating bacteria. You know it's not a bacterium at all. It's a eukaryote. Uh, but that is not a member of, of Unicanta. It's a member of Excavata, which just goes to show that this amoeba-like body plan is a polyphyletic characteristic. So uh, you see a lot of different amoeba-like forms that don't necessarily mean that it is in a particular uh, well-supported taxon or clade. Here's a couple of representatives of gymnamoeba. On the left here you have a diagram that is labeled showing you different things you should uh, be able to identify within an amoeba. The nucleus, they eat by food vacuoles, they don't have a cytostome or a cytoproct. Uh, they can eat out of just about any part of their body by forming a vacuole. Uh, here's a pseudopod, which is one of those lobopodia uh, that enable it to move around. Uh, the microfilaments can uh, move uh, lobes of the cytoplasm in a particular direction towards a stimulus or away from a stimulus. Uh, they also have contractile vacuoles, as do uh, things like paramecium to maintain water balance. Um, and over here on the right, this is an entamoeba. I believe this is entamoeba gingivalis. And you can see they don't always look like blobby like this, or with this kind of undefined border. But in this case, this particular gymnamoeba, you can see its nucleus here, uh, it's just kind of football shaped. So they can be kind of amorphous or kind of have a more well-defined shape to them. But these are the naked amoebas because they don't have any uh, plates of cellulose or uh, calcium carbonate or anything like that. Our last phylum of Unicanta, which is our last phylum of protists, is Coanoflagellata. Uh, and this is not a particularly large phylum in terms of how many individuals. We don't eat it, we don't wear it, we don't uh, encounter it on a daily basis, it doesn't make us sick. The reason we're interested in having a coanoflagellata as one of the protists that we study is because it is a sister group to the animals. Uh, this type of cell we'll see something very similar when we get to talking about animal lineages and sponges in particular. Uh, the cells of coanoflagellates are small, uh, fewer than 10 micrometers in size, 10 microns, um, which, you know, typically we think of eukaryotic cells as being the bigger type of cells between uh, 10 to 100 microns, but this guy, not so much. They're, they're pretty tiny. And there are solitary forms, like this guy here, and I'll show you a colonial form in a minute. Some of them will just anchor to a particular spot and be sessile. Others will be modal, they will move around. Uh, and they have that single flagellum, characteristic of the unicanta, here it is right here, within a collar of microvilli. Uh, villi are finger-like projections. We have them in our intestines to help us absorb food, and coanoflagellates have these microvilli, which kind of help them do the same thing. And the collar uh, may not be like the collar on a shirt that you might wear, uh, but more like a collar, like the cone of shame, or an e-collar that you might put on a pet to keep it from scratching at uh, something, or to keep it from licking its wounds after it's been through a, a surgery or an accident or something like that. So this flagellum uh, waggles, as it does, and creates a current that helps to bring water through the microvilli. And these food particles stick to the microvilli, and they can be brought into the cell, into the body of the coanoflagellate, to, uh, to feed it. You can form these food vacuoles and digest those tiny little particles of food. Uh, one genus within the coanoflagellata is Proterospongia, which the name implies it's in like an early form of a sponge. 
So here's another representation of a coanoflagellate with its flagellum and its collar of microvilli and the body of the cell with the nucleus inside. And here is a colonial form. You can see lots of coanoflagellates all together uh, with a, a non-living matrix binding them together. Again, when we talk about sponges in a few weeks' time, uh, you're going to have to think back to this and say, aha! I've seen something like this before. It's not just deja vu. It is a coanoflagellate like structure that we see in sponges. So that's it for the protist, folks. Uh, next up, we will talk about plants. I'll get into our first good monophyletic, monophyletic kingdom. Uh, and then we'll talk about fungi, and then we'll get into the animals, and that'll be our, that'll be our course. All right, thanks for watching.